Hello friends and welcome on this day that God has made. It is good to worship with you. Today we return to the Jordan River yet again as we witness the baptism of Jesus and explore the promises made in baptism. I invite you to take a moment to quiet your hearts and minds as we prepare for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them, receive them, in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your Spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, 
our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson comes from Genesis chapter 1. Out of chaos, God brings order. Out of the formless void, God brings light. This familiar story was good news for the Israelites, who experienced much chaos in their history. It remains good news for us. God created and continues to create new life. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God said that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson comes from Acts chapter 19. In Ephesus, Paul encounters people who had received John's baptism of repentance, but had never heard of the Holy Spirit or of baptism in the name of Jesus. After Paul baptizes them, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and empowers them with the gifts of the Spirit. A reading from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Grace and peace to you in Christ, the beloved who loves you.
Amen. Well, friends, we're back at the river again. Uh, I'm reminded of that beautiful scene in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? where the boys stumble across a revival where, where folks are getting baptized in the river. Bill Mark been saved. Well, that's it, boys. I've been redeemed. The preacher done washed away all my sins and transgressions. It's a straight and narrow from here on out. And heaven everlasting's my reward. Delmer, what are you talking about? We got bigger fish to fry. The preacher said all my sins is washed away, including that Piggly Wiggly I knocked over in Yazoo. I thought you said you was innocent of those charges. Well, I was lying. And the preacher said that that sin's been washed away, too. Neither God nor man's got nothing on me now. Come on in, boys. The water is fine. Today, as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, we're reminded that baptism isn't all about forgiveness for knocking over the Piggly Wiggly and Yazoo. It's more like, like playing in the river of life and finding God sustaining us even more than this water that we need to survive. A while back, archaeologists in present-day Syria discovered what's known as the Dura Europos House Church. And here he thought church at home was something new. This house church had a, a small room that they believed to be a church baptistry from around the year 230. So this would have been about 200 years after Jesus' baptism. In this house, they found the baptistry with a, a small bathtub-like font, and there were paintings all over the wall. Imagine uh, a more rustic version of those small chapels with the stained glass windows on the sides of European cathedrals. What's really interesting about these paintings is what they emphasize as important when it comes to the life of the baptized. One of the paintings depicts David conquering Goliath, suggesting that in baptism, individuals can conquer the immense power of evil. Another shows the Samaritan woman with Jesus at the well and the paralyzed man healed by Jesus, suggesting that in baptism, believers receive forgiveness, healing, and wholeness. Another is a young shepherd carrying a sheep, suggesting that Jesus cares for the baptized like a good shepherd. And perhaps most interesting, the three women on Easter Day who brought spices to anoint the body of Jesus, but instead encountered the resurrection. This last image was located near the tub font, suggesting that in baptism, the believer joins into the death and resurrection of Christ, and so receives the benefits of the mystery of Christ. What was once a dead body is now the life of the resurrection. Friends, in the waters of baptism, we find the power to conquer evil. We find forgiveness and healing and wholeness. We find that we are cared for. We find life where there is death. We find our identity. The river of life runs through these stories, but the mouth of this river lies at the dawn of creation itself. In the beginning, the ancient Jewish poem exclaims, God tames the dangerous waters. God shapes the formless in void into land and sea and sky. God breathes on the water, stirring the very essence of life into reality, bringing order to the shadow and chaos. Over the last year, we've all experienced our fair share of the formless and void that seeks to besiege order. But we see in the beginning Destruction and life are, are fused together like the, the hydrogen and oxygen that makes up all of this water here. Water stands at the center of God's work of creation. And water stands at the center of the life we find in Christ Jesus. In today's gospel lesson, Mark echoes Genesis. In the beginning, the Spirit hovered over the waters. And the word of God was present from the beginning of the created world. What the word created was good. In Mark, the spirit of God once again hovers over the waters. And once again, the word of God speaks. 
Genesis describes God bringing order to chaos through his word. Mark describes God taming the chaos of our sins through his word. Genesis describes the abundant possibilities of God's creative work. Mark describes the renewal of these possibilities through God's entering into creation in order to redeem it. God created, entered into, and radically transformed those dangerous waters of creation. And in the waters of baptism, God, who created us, claims us, enters our hearts in Christ Jesus, and transforms our very lives with the power of the Holy Spirit. This ritual marks the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. This is the beginning of a life of healing and redemption. The ministry that brought good news to the oppressed, bound up the brokenhearted, proclaimed liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners. The wind from God sweeps over the face of the waters to pick up those that have fallen. There, on the Jordan River, we see a moment of divine solidarity. A moment where Christ in his full divinity and humanity joins himself to us. Jesus joins us in baptism, just as we join him. Through baptism, we gain this deep sense of interconnectedness with the divine. It's as if we have taken on Christ. We have been clothed in Christ. In the waters of baptism, we hear God say to us, You are my child, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This ritual we see today is the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. And likewise, as we have been joined with Christ through the waters of baptism, we see our baptism as the beginning of our public ministry. Children of God, we are called to respond to the love of God as carriers of the gospel. A call to share the living water that is Christ with a world thirsty, wrought with the droughts of injustice, hopelessness, and fear. That call begins with the good news that God shouts from the heavens, You are my child, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. You are an essential witness to God's story in the world as you proclaim the beginning of the good news in and through a life of discipleship, a resurrection living, a calling marked by your baptismal promises to live among God's faithful people. Hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. Proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. Serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. You are God's beloved children, claimed, called, and sent to be resurrection people in the world. This is how God meets us where we are. So this week, you're invited down to the river to pray. In that prayer, let the river of life that is Jesus flow through you and out into God's creation. As you pray, know that God tears open the heavens to meet you in these waters. As you find yourself drenched in these life-giving waters, May you have a mind open to new encounters, a mouth willing to speak against injustice, hands ready to pray for any who are in need, ears eager to hear the stories of those often left unheard, and feet to take us where God needs us to serve. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
guided by Christ, made known to the nations. Let us offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all people in need. For the Church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit they proclaim the forgiveness of sins, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on the earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all God has made, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, their laborers, busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, especially Diane, Bill, Linda, Beth, and George, that God shower compassion. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the congregation gathered here, for students returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. We pray for justice, peace, healing, understanding, guidance. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. We lift up Susan and the Hansen family for peace and comfort. We pray for the unemployed and underemployed, for financial health and security, we ask your protection for nurses, doctors, and frontline workers. Give them strength, O Lord. We pray for those in assisted living facilities and for foster children, as well as the staff, volunteers, and clients at the next door. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for all the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Now this blessing. God the Creator strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved fill you. And the Holy Spirit the Comforter keep you.
Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.